right. Lord, thank you. God, we bless you. We praise you. I thank you for the privilege of preaching the everlasting gospel. And we invite your presence and we ask in Jesus' name, come Holy Spirit and speak to your people. Come and open your word and thrill our souls and our hearts with your goodness, with your love for us, with your might and your power. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm in the book of Matthew in chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Before they came together, she was found of child of the Holy Ghost. God had an awesome plan, and, uh, and no one understood it. Even though the Lord had said to, through uh, Isaiah, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's Jesus. And it had to come some way. And here's this young lady that the Lord asked to, to carry his son and and uh, and she's wondering how is this going to happen and uh, and he tells her the holy ghost is going to do it the holy ghost will come on you and what's born of you will be called the son of god jesus comes hallelujah jesus came to earth to die for jesus came to earth to redeem us from the curse to redeem us from sin and to bring us to God and and to take us into the family of God where we weren't part of it but now we are part of it because we're born in him Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost God is so good God is so awesome how are you part of his family have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? God loves you. God sent Jesus to die for you. And it's miraculous. It is miraculous what God did. You know, the Bible says God created all things by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ made all the worlds. Amen? And so everything we see, He, he gave us all the elements. He gave us all the everything. And, uh, and, and God is good. And in order for us to be able to see and comprehend what the Lord is doing, um, you know, it's the eyes of faith that we use. Jesus, the Bible says, he came to his own and his own received him not. And so he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. And so the, the, the Lord wants us to come to know the Savior, God whom to know is eternal life. And so, so how does he get here? It's a miracle. It's a, you don't have babies without having a mom and a dad. Amen. And you did have a mom and a dad. You got Father God. Hallelujah. And so Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus is the Son of Man. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his Mary, his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And so after she's betrothed to Joseph, you know, there are, there are chains uh, of events that happen in the fullness of time. You know, to everything there's a time and a season to every purpose. And so here she was and she came to her the, uh, an age in her life where before she was betrothed, it wasn't time. But now she's betrothed, now it's time. And, and, and But the Lord has a job for her to do. And the Lord had a job for Joseph to do. And so it says, it says, before they came together. And so, and so, Jesus, so, so Mary is found with child of the Holy Spirit. And, and they're betrothed, and, uh, and I, I'm, I'm sure they, they, uh, they uh, in time, they get married, you know. <clears throat> but they don't have, they, they're not having 
sexual relationships until after Jesus is born. And so, so the Lord asks us to do different things. And, and whatever he's asking you to do, it's because there's a big picture. There's a big thing God wants to get done in, in life. There's a big thing God wants to get done that you get to play your part in what he's calling you to do. If you believe him, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to be part. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. She said, be it unto me according to your word. And so, and, and so it was. It was unto her. And so, so she's highly thought of, highly, highly spoken of throughout all the ages. Amen? Because, because she believed God. And so he says, uh, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. And so Joseph, you know, he was a good person. He was a good man. He was a just man. And he didn't want to make a big example out of her. And, uh, you know, the merciful gain, get mercy. And he had mercy in his heart. And I'm sure that he was going through all kinds of different uh, things inside of himself. And, uh, but, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, so, you know, the Lord gives us enough. The Lord lets us know enough. And, and God let Joseph know. You know, if you don't have a word from God, you don't know God told you to do something, you can, strug you can struggle and, and strain and all that kind of stuff. But when you know God asks you to do something, uh, you've met with God. It's time to do it. It's time to just tell your flesh what you're going to do and, and just bring your flesh under and do what God asks you to do. Amen. And so, so says, don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And so she has conceived. It's a miracle. Hallelujah. And it's from God. It's the Son of God. And she will bring forth a son and you'll call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That's, that's the purpose. That's why Jesus came. He came to save his people from their sins. Jesus came to redeem us from the curse of the law. He came to, to buy us back. We had been sold under sin. In Adam, we all died. And we've been sold under sin. And so we're, so we're all born sinners. That's why we sin, because we were born sinners. That's why you must be born again. Because when you're born again, the new man is not a sinner. The new man is born from above. Amen? And when we're born from above, we're different people than we were when we were born under sin. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And, and that's what the Lord wants in us. And so, and so Jesus came to save us from our sins. And so Jesus saves us in our sins and then he saves us from our sins. Amen. He saves us from the, from the, from the effect of our sins. He delivered us. God delivers us from the power of darkness and he translates us into the kingdom of his dear son. And so I'm saved from wrath. I'm saved from, from, from what, I was, what, what I was involved in. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. All we like sheep have gone astray. We turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. And so Jesus came to save me from all that. And, and now he's saving me. He is saving me from my sins. How is he saving me from my sins? This is a big deal that I find in, uh, in Christendom throughout the whole world. You know, if I, if I don't understand this correctly and, and, uh, and I listen for this, you know, I listen for this because, because this is the big deal that, that enables you to stand He's saving me from my sins. How is he saving me from my sins? The Bible says he became the author of eternal salvation to them that obey him. 
And so, and so he said, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. If you resist and rebel, you'll be devoured with the edge of the sword. And so, so Jesus came to save me. Well, how, how does he do it? He, he comes and he, and he delivers me from the power of darkness. And so I'm delivered from that. That had dominion over me. Whatever the, the spirits involved in that were, whatever the, the impulses and all that, he delivers me from that, delivers me from the power of it and translates me into the kingdom of his dear son. And so sin does not have dominion over me anymore. Sin does not, I do not have to do what sin tells me to do. I may have to fight. He fought for me, and I may have to fight for me. Listen, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. I may have to get violent with me in order for me to be able to walk in what God has called me to, because he came to save me from my sins, and he became the author of eternal salvation to them that obey. And so if I hear what he's saying, and I walk in what he's asking me to walk in, you know, if he's asking me to go right and I go left, probably something not good is on the left rather than on the right. Walking in the will of God may not be the easy way to walk. But he said, if, if you live after the flesh, you'll die. But if you through the Spirit put to death the deeds of the flesh, you'll live. And so if I put my foot, if I put my direction in life where the Lord asked me to, Jesus said, um, he said, uh, um, where I am, there my servant shall be also. And so he says, go to the right. I want to go where you are, Jesus, so I'll go to the right. I'm going to go to the right to do what you want me to do because I do not want to be caught in a place where if in the right, if I'm in the will of God and all hell breaks loose on me, I'm in a good place. If I'm out of the will of God and it looks like it's really good, Jesus said, woe to you when everybody speaks good about you. Amen? You're not looking for that. You're not looking to have your easy place in this life. Listen, your easy place is where God is. Your easy place is where God is calling you to. And so when I give myself to him to walk with him, he is in the process of saving me from my sins. A good man falls seven times, but he rises up again. I may find that, that I, you know, I've got stuff to overcome that is, I didn't even know I had, had it to overcome, but there it is, and I, and I have to overcome it. Amen? I've got, to, I've got to be overcomers walk with him in white. Overcomers eat hidden manna. Hidden manna is, it's, you don't get to see it until after you've overcome. And after you've overcome, oh my goodness, there it is. You know, you know what the Lord said to the children of Israel in the wilderness? He said, uh, he said I think he said it through, uh, through Joshua. He said, the giants, they'll be meat for us. The giants, they're meat for us. You know, you don't even know where your strength is until you get out and you start doing what God calls you to do. Paul said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Amen. If my, my strength is, per, or his strength is perfected in my weakness. And so whenever I'm in a weak place, you know, if I'm, the Bible says, cursed is he who trusts in the arm of flesh. And so if I'm here, try, and I know I can do it, okay, rot a rock. The Bible says, let him who thinks he stands, beware lest he fall. The Lord didn't call me into a place where I trust me, but I trust him. He came to save me from my sins. He shall save his people from their sins. I was saved, I'm being saved, and I will be saved. Amen? And so while I'm being saved, you know what's happening to me? Uh, what I was doing in the beginning, that's getting dropped off, then that gets dropped off, then that gets dropped off, then that gets dropped off. And you know what's happening? I am I'm moving more and more into a Christ-like, I'm growing up into him in all things so because you know when are you when you first start fighting when you first get saved you don't even know you're in a battle but you'll find it out pretty quick that you're in a battle you are born into a battle and being born into a battle you've got all hell arrayed against you 
you were partying before and you were doing whatever, if it felt good, do it and all that, living after your flesh. And, and, and whenever you get born again, now all of a sudden, now you don't get to live after your flesh anymore. And, and you're trying to get your flesh to settle down. And, um, and your fresh flesh is screaming at you. And when you're not equipped in your brain, when you're not equipped in your mind with the Word of God, you do not know how to deal with thoughts that are coming your way, the, um, a carnal way of looking at the events of life that are happening to me. Don't know how to deal with it right. And, and I'm, expecting, I'm expecting God to think like me. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, the God in my head is not necessarily the God in the Bible. And so the God in my head is, you know, I'm saying, well, you know, if I was God, I would do it this way and I would do that, and, and, but I'm not God. And he doesn't do it that way. And he wants me to learn. He wants me to take on the whole armor of God so that, so that I'm ready to fight with, uh, against all the strategies of Satan. And, and I, so that I'm able to stand in the evil day. God wants me to get that. God wants me to understand that. That's Jesus saving me from my sins. Amen? Paul writes to the Galatians and he said, You did run well. What hindered you? It's not good to be hindered. Amen? It's good to keep on running. Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Oh, you were running well. What happened? What did you start looking at? What did you start looking to? And uh, Ananias and Sapphira, you know, they, they come to bring, to, to bring their gift, but, but they devised a little different thing. And the Lord said, no, 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 I, I see what's going on. I know what's going on. And whenever they fell dead, great fear came on all the church. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, and that's where God wants me to be, in a place where I have proper view of me, proper view of life, proper view of God, and so that, so that I know what my enemy is, and I know how to fight so that I can win. Amen? He wants to save me from my sins. Um, to him that knows to do good and does not do it, to him it's sin. Amen? And so God, that's just one, one of the definitions, one of the many definitions of sin. And the Lord wants me to know it because he wants me to win. Amen? And, uh, and Jesus came to save me from that. And so how does Jesus do it? Um, the Bible says, They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus died for me. And by the word of their testimony, what do you have to say about what you're going through? What do you have to say about the situation? If you say different than what God says, you're not overcoming. You've got to find out what God says so that what he says is what you're saying about your situation. They overcame him. They over, you, you overcome in life by the, by the blood of the lamb, by the word of your testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. They overcame by the blood of the land. You don't get it right the very first time, many times. A good man falls seven times, and he rises up again. A good man, out of the good treasure in his heart, brings forth good. Amen? Out of the good treasure in his heart. You know, the good man still has flesh. The good man still has flesh. And the good man has to deal with his flesh that isn't good. Flesh is flesh, and flesh wants flesh answer. Uh, flesh is answer, and flesh wants uh, flesh is pleasure, and flesh wants flesh is ease and comfort. Flesh wants the way of flesh. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Jesus came to save me from that and to bring me into the place where I learn the way of the Spirit. I learn to walk with Him. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus continually is washing me and cleansing me and teaching me and, and helping me get up and keep going. Get up. Come on, let's overcome this. Come on, let's walk according to the Word of God. Come on, let's walk according to what I've begun in you. I've begun a good work in you and I will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so the, the, that's what the Lord is calling us to. That's what he's, he's calling us out of and into so that we learn to walk with him and we learn to overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. 
The word of my testimony is so important. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. If I walk around and I'm and my testimony is different from the Lord's. Listen, the, the ten spies had an evil report. Where did it come out of? Out of their mouth. God said one thing, and they said different than God. Amen? They had a different report than God. God wants me to say what He says about life. God wants me to say what He says about where I'm at in life, what's going on in my life. I can feel all kinds of feelings and feelings can, oh, they can rise up high and feelings, they don't just talk. They can be shouting and screaming at me. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's not so because I feel. No, it doesn't matter what I feel. What, is the, what does the word say? They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcome by their testimony. They come up over the circumstance because they continue to say what God says until they see it manifest. Amen? They overcame by the word of their testimony. The word of my testimony needs to be faith. It needs to be, faith is, faith comes by, I heard what God said. Amen? Faith comes by, I'm hearing. I keep on hearing what God says. The situation is talking to me. My feelings are talking to me. All those things are screaming at me. But I keep, I have, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And so I demand, I'm going to hear what God has to say so that I can come up over the thing. Because up here is hidden manna. Up here uh, is is a, a, a vantage play, a point, a place to eat from, a pay, place to live in that's not here. It's I overcame the obstacles. Amen. I walk with him in a new place. They overcame by, by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they love not their life unto the death. If I have, if I've set my limits and my limits aren't God's limits, you got to do this for me, and you got to do it in thus and such a time, probably going to lose, probably not going to overcome, probably going to find myself overcome and going back to where I was before or, you know, into something worse. You know? but, but, if, but if I'm in it to win it, and if I'm in it all the way to the end, he's saving me from my sins. He's saving me from a carnal way of looking at life and a carnal way of living life. He is saving me. He begun a good work and he's performing it in me. And I'm working out what he is working in. Hallelujah. God is awesome. Amen. He shall save his people from their sins. There's a, there's a whole lot wrapped up in that little teeny verse. But but that whole lot that is wrapped up in there is what I need to have in order for me to walk as an overcomer. Um, I've been just in this in this year, and and uh, listening to so many different prophets and apostles in this past year, and just uh, hearing and realizing what God wants to do. There's a revival that's coming that is that's epic proportions i mean a revival of a billion souls a billion plus souls brought into the kingdom around this globe billion souls um, revival happening and and can you imagine the book of acts being worked out right in your in your house in your little group in your city and you're seeing God do miraculous, miraculous things like, uh, like he did in the book of Acts. The guy who was lame in his feet for 40 some years, born that way. And Peter and, and uh, John walk into the temple and Peter says, look on us. And 
Silver and gold have I not, none, but such as I have give I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, he rides up and walk, and he gets up, and he goes l walking and leaping and praising God. And every there's an uproar, and more people come into the kingdom. God going to do it. All these people born again, all these people have to learn how to walk with God. If I don't know how to walk with God, I don't know how to teach someone how to walk with God. But if I learn how to walk with God and I learn how to get a, get a grip on me so that I win with Him, I can teach others how to do it. That's where God's calling us. God's calling. He said, pray the, the Lord of the harvest that He would send forth laborers into His harvest. Laborers. Someone, you know, you, you know, whenever you're looking at the, the labor force, you've got the beginners and then you got the, the, the I, I don't know what all, but you get the journeyman, you know, you get the people who are just, just starting and the people who are, who are, ec begun, became experts in, in it. And, and we have to grow. We have to grow. He came to save us from our sins. He didn't, he didn't come to save us so that we can sin. He came to save us from our sins. He said, you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You're the city that's set on a hill. You know, men don't light a candle and put it under a, bu a bed or under a bushel, but they put it on a candlestick so that all who come into the house can see the light of it. You're the light. People want to see from you. Let your light shine in such a way. Men see your good works and they glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so they want to see us. We're different. We're, we're light. We're not darkness. We're not doing stuff shady and say, don't pay any attention to what I'm doing. You know, here's what I believe. Really, what you believe is coming out of your life. Amen? And, but if here's what I believe, oh my goodness, you see, this is the entrance of His Word gives light. And the light goes on as the Word comes in. Amen? And, and as the light goes on on the inside, it starts to show up every place. He came to save me from my sins. Amen? He shall save His people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. <laughs> All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord. God doesn't do anything but that he reveals what he's going to do to his servants, the prophets. That's what the Lord said. God said, Before I get ready to do it, I'm going to talk to my servants, the prophets. There are prophets. There are prophets. There have always been prophets. And, and there are prophets today. Jesus ascended on, on, up on high and he gave gifts to men. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. To bring to maturity saints. So that the saints, that's you and me, so that the saints can do the work of service. God wants us to serve him and to serve our generation by the will of God. And so, and so the apostle, the prophet, the event, they each come and they give up to us what God has, the gift that God has placed inside of them so that that gets imparted to, to us and we learn how to operate. We learn how to walk in the different gifts. God and the, and the prophet has something different to give than the other gifts. And the prophet is a seer. He can see what other people cannot see. And, uh, and he gets to see it before we get to see it. The Lord made it that way. And it's no different today. It's no, uh, and, and so you can look through the world today and you'll see there's, you know, I don't care which gift it is. You look at one teacher compared to another teacher and you've got uh, grade A, B, C, D, you know, and, and, and the, the, the anointing, the uh, illumination, the ability to teach. Oh, my goodness. It goes, you know, you, you, th this teacher is awesome. This teacher is good, you know, b but, but he doesn't measure up to this teacher. The same thing in a prophet. You know, you got some prophets and they'll prophesy. The Bible says you can all prophesy one by one, but then you come in, you have another prophet, and oh my goodness, the illumination that he brings is awesome. It's God talking to the generation. And so, and so he says, um, 
This was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. God said it through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which, uh, which is translated God with us. Who, what, did, what was Jesus' name? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God with us. God was with us in the form of Jesus. Amen? You know what? When Jesus comes to live on the inside, God is with us. Amen? When the Holy Spirit comes to, to, to indwell us, um, he, who is He? He's the comforter. He's the teacher. Amen? And God wants to, God, God loves us and God sent Jesus to die in our place. And God sent Jesus because there is a plan that is awesome, that is great and, and, uh, and, and wonderful for your life. God has something for you that is awesome, that is, you know, whenever the Lord reveals it, um, it's why I'm here. It's what I have life for. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, uh, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. So here's Joseph. He takes Mary as his wife because the Lord told, because the angel of the Lord said it. And, and they didn't culminate their marriage. They didn't, they didn't have sex until after Jesus was born. I know that, you know, that, that uh, there's uh, certain sects that say, you know, Jesus was a virgin, all, you know, I mean, I mean uh, Mary was a virgin all the way. But here he tells us he didn't know her. He didn't have sex with her until after Jesus was born. And then, they ha and then Jesus had brothers. She had children after that. And so, and so we can, if we just stay with the Bible, we just do ourselves a great big favor, you know? And so he didn't know her until then. You know, when the Lord calls us into a place where, where there is, there is, we abstain from certain things to please God. Do you want to please God? Do you want to be pleasing to God? Whenever the Lord appears and the Lord, you know, it's one thing to be trying to get someplace, but it's another thing to have the Lord appear and God say it. The angel of the Lord said it to him. Now, it's, there's, there's, there's no um, wondering, what, what should I do here? No, 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 the Lord told me exactly what to do. I know exactly what to do. And whenever I know that, do it. Just do it. God asked me to do. Amen? Yeah. yeah. How much stuff rides on what you do? How much of, of what other people get rides on what I do? What my own choices are? When it's just, I'm just thinking, I'm just me. I'm just me, this, you know, it's just me, me and me and the Lord. Me and, and my feelings, my wishes, my desires, and it's just me and the Lord. Really? Really? The things you've seen and learned and heard and received in me do. Paul said, he said, I keep my body and I bring it under subjection and make my body obey me. I don't let my body tell me what to do. I tell it what to do, lest after I've preached to others, I should be cast away. I've got a job to do. You have a job to do that's bigger than you. You have a job to do. We're here to serve our generation by the will of God. We're here to get a great big job done before we leave this place by the will of God. You know, I just uh, just finally hit 76. 76. You know, 76 is only 24 years under 100. You know, 76 came so fast. Um, my mother-in-law lives with us. She's 93. It's like that. It's just like that. It's like you look back and I, and I look at my grandkids, my kids, my kids, and they're getting closer to 60 than 50, some of them. My kids? Really? And, and, I, and I look at my grandkids and my great-grandkids. It's like that. It's like that. You know, a hundred, multiply that times nine, that's not very fast. I mean, that's not very much. 
100 times 9, that's, that's uh, 900. Multiply times 10, that's 1,000. Mm. I can look back now and I can look at history and I can think, when I was a little kid, you know, you look at, I mean, I, I, look, at, I look at young people right now learning about what happened in the 50s. I was alive in the 50s. I was alive in the 40s. And, uh, and I remember the 50s very well, and I remember the 60s very well. I, I remember whenever we had our first television. I remember when they first talked about putting a man on the moon. First computer. I was working in industry when the first computers came out. I remember the, the, the guys programming the little handhelds. I remember when the, when the first 10 key adding machine came out. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All this stuff. The Lord said it was going to happen this way. But this is nothing. You, say you have someone who was born 10 years ago, and this is all like, uh, that's, that's, that's ancient history, or born in 20 years ago. It's still, it's like ancient history. Hard to even think about it. But whenever you get to be older, you look back and you say, that was just yesterday. It was just yesterday. It was, it was no time ago that uh, I, I was born right at the end of, of World War II. And then, and then we had the Korean conflict, and then the Vietnam conflict, and, and all these things. Oh my goodness! And you, you look at younger people, and it's like that's that's way no, that's, that wasn't very long ago at all. It wasn't very long ago. Very soon, soon and very soon, we're going to see the Lord. We're going to stand before the Lord. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last to have a proper perspective. God, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a virgin, born under the law. The angels, the a angel, when, uh, when, he, when he appeared, uh, the angels, peace on earth, goodwill towards men, is what the Lord had to say through them. Peace on earth. Hmm. He's the Prince of Peace. Without him, there is no peace. Without him, I mean, we're, we're looking right now today in, uh, at, at this time, and we're looking at, at what, what's been gone on in, in our country in the direction that possibly our country could be going. Whoa, it doesn't look good on one hand, unless you hear the prophets. If you hear the prophets, you believe what the prophets say, okay, hallelujah, there's a different story. Thank you, Jesus. I choose to believe the prophets. Amen. I choose to believe the pro I choose to believe the word of God. God said, believe my prophets, so shall you prosper. It's a short life. God sent Jesus. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. And, 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 and his kingdom was birthed on the earth then. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And here it is, 2,000 years. And the Bible says, the whole earth groans in travail, waiting for God's sons to be manifested. God wants you to be manifested in this earth as, as his son. God sent Jesus because God loves you. And God has an eternal plan, an awesome plan. Listen, I'm not looking to all this, for all this to happen. He said, uh, Peter writes and he says, we're looking for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. All the sin and the corruption and the evil and all that kind of stuff, be, I'll be, all, all that influence, gone. Amen. Death and hell thrown into the lake of fire. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I hope you got something out of this. I rambled a whole lot, but praise the Lord. Father, thank you. I ask, bless your people. Strengthen them in Jesus' name. Amen.